In this example, we're being asked to compute the section modulus and radius of gyration about the centroidal x-axis of this upside-down T-shape. So um, let's take a look at what we have here. We have this kind of T-looking shape that's upside-down, and at the base of this T, we have something called the datum. Now, if you remember from some earlier videos uh, or maybe another class, the word datum is the same thing as a reference axis. So you can think of the datum, something called a datum, like a, just like a global x-axis, or you could have a vertical datum, like a global y-axis. So we can think of this, this datum here in blue as our global x-axis. Um, the uh, stem here, or sometimes called the web, has a thickness of two inches and a height of three inches. And then this bottom flange of the T here um, has a total width of four inches and a height of two inches. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, for section modulus, we know that the section modulus of a uh, about a particular axis is defined as the moment of inertia about that same axis divided by the um, uh, centroidal location in the opposite direction. So S sub X is I X over uh, Y bar. And then the radius of gyration about the X axis is gonna be the square root of I sub X over A. And again, we wanna make maybe a note to ourselves that this X right here, X indicates the centroidal x-axis okay so the centroidal x-axis is going to be somewhere you know at some height here that we don't really know yet and it's going to be located at some height y bar above our reference axis or, or our datum is what we sometimes call it so um, we need to go through this process and get all of these values uh, for this shape so let's go ahead and get the easy one first. How about we go ahead and calculate the area? Well, if you just look at this shape, you can pretty much look at it. Um, we, can, we can separate this into two easy shapes right here. So you have two rectangles basically that you're considering. So you have one of them is two inches by three inches. And then the other rectangle is four inches by two inches. So um, you can do a little bit of mental math and say that this is six square inches plus eight square inches. So that area is 14 square inches. So there's the area. That's uh, pretty straightforward. The next thing we need to, we can go ahead and get is Y bar. So if you remember for a composite shape, um, which remember a composite shape is several simple shapes that are kind of combined together. We're gonna have the summation as i goes from one to n of uh, y sub i, a sub i, all divided by the summation i goes from one to n of a sub i. Well, um, we can expand this and we'll say this is y1 a1 plus y2 a2 divided by a1 plus a2, okay? Um, because we have two shapes and we already kind of separated it into a stem and a flange or a web and a flange is what we call sometimes. So let's get Y1. What is Y1? Well, Y1, if you remember, is going to be the vertical distance measured from the datum to the centroid of part number one, if we can call the stem part number one. So what is this distance right here? What is the vertical distance from the datum to the centroid of part number one. Maybe pause the video because I'm about to say it. It is 3.5 inches, 0.5 inches. And then we already figured out A1 is six square inches. And then what is Y2 gonna be? Well, Y2 is the vertical distance from the datum to the centroid of part number two. So that'll be half of two inches, so that's one inch times its area is eight square inches. And we already figured out a few minutes ago that the total area is 14 square inches. So if we punch this through our calculator, um, <coughs> we should get about 2.07 inches is Y bar. Now I'm gonna punch that through my calculator again, just to confirm. 
yes, 2.07 um, inches is Y bar. So we're, we're making uh, good progress here. And the next thing we need to get is the um, moment of inertia about the centroidal X axis. So that'll be what we call I sub X. And if you remember, we can build this based on the parallel axis theorem. So our handy little formula is the summation as I goes from one to N of I sub X sub I plus A sub I D sub Y sub I squared, okay? Now we can expand this because we know we have two pieces. We could say this is I X one plus A one D Y one squared plus I X sub two plus A two D Y two squared, okay? Now here's the great thing. We already have A1 and A2, so we can check A1 and A2 off. Um, that was six square inches and then eight square inches. All right, so the next thing we need is I sub X1 and I sub X2, and we also need D sub Y1 and D sub Y2. So how about we get these one part at a time, okay? Let's get I sub X1 first. Well, if we look at this um, rectangular piece right here, Remember for a rectangle, what's the moment of inertia about its own centroidal axis? B times H cubed over 12. So that'll give us uh, two inches times three inches cubed over 12. And um, when you punch this through, um, I get 4.5 inches to the fourth. So there we go, we have um, IX sub one. The next thing we can go ahead and get, since we're working on part number one right now, is D sub Y one, okay? Now remember, D sub Y is the vertical distance from the overall centroid to the centroid of part number one. So let's make a note of that and remind ourselves. D sub I sub one is the vertical distance from Y bar to centroid of part one. So maybe you go ahead and, and sketch this out and figure out what it is on your own. Maybe pause the video, but basically it's gonna be the distance from this Y bar to the centroid of part one, D sub Y one. So the centroid of part one, if you remember from earlier, was 3.5 inches, okay? So here, and again, work it out on your own. Make sure you convince yourself of it. DY1 is gonna be 3.5 inches minus 2.07 inches, and I get 1.43 inches. And in a similar way, DY2 is gonna be 2.07 inches minus one inch is 1.07 inches. So again, convince yourself of this, pause the video, work this out, do the, these number crunchings on your own because you're not gonna have me on the final exam just telling you what these numbers are. You're gonna have to look at a shape and figure it out on your own. So uh, now what we can do is um, we've got, we've got uh, DY1, I kind of skipped over and got DY2. Ooh. We still need to get IX2, okay? So that's of the of the um, bottom flange. IX2 is gonna be, again, BH cubed over 12 of the bottom rectangle. So four inches times two inches cubed over 12, okay? And again, looking at that bottom rectangle, I get 2.67 inches to the fourth here, all right? So now we can put all of this together and we can finally say I sub X is gonna be 4.5 inches to the fourth um, plus six inches squared times 1.43 inches quantity squared. Watch your parentheses here, plus open uh, 2.67 inches to the fourth, watch these units, plus eight square inches times 1.07 inches squared. Remember you gotta square the units and square the number as appropriate. So 
make sure you get the same number. I get 28.6 inches to the fourth, okay? So um, now we're ready to compute our final values. S sub X is I sub X over Y bar. So we get 28.6 inches to the fourth over 2.07 inches and we get 13.8 inches cubed. That is one of our final answers. And then radius of gyration about the centroidal X axis is going to be uh, square root of I sub X over the cross section area. So we'll get square root of 28.6 inches to the fourth over 14 square inches. And uh, we finally get an Rx value of 1.43 inches. And that is our other answer. Again, punch these through and make sure you get the same answers as I'm getting. But that concludes this example.